So we are reaching quite the turning point in Hokkaido Gals. And honestly, all these considered something that was bound to happen. But this is your main man, Master Cell, leave the Master Knights of the Roundtable of Company 1 subscribe to the Spit Booth. And we're here with Hokkaido Gals, episode 7. Now, I did my video covering the other episodes of Hokkaido Gals that have been gone by. And two reasons I did that, because one, need to put respect on this show. And two, all the girls have finally shown up. However, I knew that was basically the basic, in, uh, ah, words. Introduction of Raina Senpai. And we definitely was going to see more of her next episode that actually, dare I say, makes her a contender. However, she's just making a lot of power moves that just simply the other two girls, Fuyuki and Sayurin, cannot do. I keep saying Sayurin, her name's wrong. It's Sayurin, not Sayurin. There's no N. No N word. And just from the start of the episode, what we have here is off the heels of last week's episode where Sabasa has to score in the top 10 or his grandmother's going to ship his ass back to Tokyo, which is probably the biggest plot this show has had so far. He's greeted immediately by Raina Senpai, to be fair, they're next door neighbors. And realizing that it's that time of year, Raina basically asks him already if he needs help studying. Because we come to find that she is the number one placement in the school, out of 176 students. And this is all unbeknownst to Raina what Sabasa's actual problem is, and he actually never actually goes into it. Which is a theme throughout this episode, because he doesn't, he tries to keep everything as secret the best he can. Especially from Fuyuki. And he agrees to have Raina tutor him. And as we see later on through this episode, not only is this the best option, it's truly a power move. Because what is Raina's senpai? All that's answered by the simple fact that she is his senpai. At the very least, a year older than him and has been where he's at before. So much so, she even gives him tips knowing that the t-shirts that he has right now, she had a year ago. Especially in certain t-shirts that uses the same question that you used on quizzes and whatnot on the final exam. Not necessarily helping him study per se, but giving him tips on how to basically do better at this specific test. While experiences of MF, sometimes learning from somebody with that experience is a good thing. Which is something that a lot of young people refuse to comprehend. For whoever needs to hear it, you don't need to get your ass kicked to learn something. So pretty much being in his position before, already having the respect and you know, <laughs> to be real, Tabasa. Tabasa was kind of be put in a position where he can't really get any better outside of this. It takes somebody like Raina that comes through to be able to elevate this man. And I don't mean to make this sound negative, but that's because he's in the group with Sarari and Fuyuki. Y'all ever heard the phrase where if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to leave that room? Because one of the blows that kind of hit for Yuki in this episode wasn't when she first seen Raina talking to Tabasa. Because as she pointed out in the previous episode, her being that senpai a year older and that pink whitish hair. Same pink whitish hair that Commander Kyoka Uzen has as Chain Soldier. I can relate. Already being someone she looks up to and the fact that Tabasa has befriended her and talking to her and the neighbors makes her super jelly. But as I was saying earlier, one big blow to Fuyuki in this episode was the fact that Tabasa can no longer help her study and make this study group with them because he needs to study on his own. Even though he doesn't mention he studied with Reina, he has to do his own thing so he can score in the top 10. And while he refuses to tell Fuyuki who he's studying with, he refuses to tell Fuyuki why he's trying to get in that top 10, which is two major mistakes which for bite him in the ass next week more likely. But the bigger picture here is the fact that he has to get away from them two so he could do things to help him get, get higher. Again, not saying Sarari and Fuyuki is bringing them down, but Fuyuki being the lower scores and Sarari being the average, he has to score at the top. That mentality that you're around is not the mentality you need right now to reach your goals. These people could be your best friends, closest people to you, and the most helpful people to you in your life in the long run. But in specific moments for goals don't align. But sure, decisions tell you that it is where it is. My bad, my food showed up. I got me a sandwich. Speaking of eating, back to Raina Senpai. Now Raina Senpai is playing the Senpai card very strong. And first and foremost, look no further honestly by the fact that she's the one person to call to Tabasa by his first name. Hey Shiki. And her using her already liking this of the Japanese style and Japanese clothing, she's already able to relate to Shiki very well. She was that late, she really just looked it up and kind of just knows what he's talking about. It's not really calling it relatability, but at least she took out time to understand. Despite not necessarily having the stereotypically personality, she is a gal. Shiki is automatically attracted to her with the simple notion of crossing her legs after this man blushing hard. That's not the only thing hard. It's already known that he pictures his lady friends in her underwear. This is something we haven't seen from Raina yet. Yet, yeah, right? Does the drawers match the hair? Or does the curly match the drape? Let me stop. But surely indeed the biggest move that is made here is the fact that 
Marina brings up that she's helping him pass his test, but she's not really receiving anything in return, and she would like to. Before actually telling Marina, Marina is saving Tobias's ass here, so he <laughs> cruelly obliges. He does say he reported people to him, but he's not going to be able to see anymore if he doesn't make the top 10, so I guess close enough. Marina's already well aware of the type of grandmother he has, so... I guess she does actually know if I have actually explicitly saying it. Long story short, she asked him out on a date if he passes. She asked him out. And first and foremost, I guess Senpai move again, she made it an obligation for him to go out with her if he passes the test, where he absolutely has to. Still rolling with the plot. And two, stereotypically speaking, in most high school romance shows, the likes of this one, they don't necessarily actually go out like that. And if they do go out, which they do, all these consider end up having an outing per se, they don't straight up call it a date. Raina has made a move here to actually straight up call it a date to make it, give it that intention right offhand. What a difference a year makes. And here's my thing about that. Raina basically just did what the other girls not only were more likely have not done, have even tried to do. Yes, you had the moment in this episode where Fuki realized that Raina was talking to Tsubasa and they started to walk off that she had a moment where her chest was heavy. This was also a time where her back wasn't aching at the same time. You can't blame the titties. Another big moment in shows like this where you have to be like, there's a moment where the main characters have to realize that they like each other or that they like somebody. Of course, us from the outside looking in, you gotta be like, obviously they liked each other this whole time, or of course they're gonna end up liking each other because the nature of the show it is. However, there has to be some kind of sign and some kind of confirmation in the show that she has that point being pushed forward. Even something as subtle as that and having to talk to your whole family about it. Especially just slightly, very slightly, but yet more melanated butter. My light skinned mama's act. After the halfway point, the wheels have officially turned from Fuyuki liking Tabasa. And of course, the problem with Tabasa is this is indeed a heroine. He kind of just like all the gals so far. Even in this case, it's a smaller heroine with only three girls. It is what it is. All three of those girls are holding a stuffed animal at him at the end of ending for nothing. However, and I'm a, I, I know this is going to sound kind of hypocritical of me. Yes, Fuyuki and Tabasa has been the OTP from the beginning. And I love it when even in a harem, they try to push that OTP as well to give us the feeling that this romance is actually going somewhere. But Fuyuki's demeanor and how she has been going about the whole thing with Tabasa made me kind of have no sympathy for her knowing that the fact that she too late when it comes to action to Basa out when Raina got to him first. And really the reason for that is when is how she deals with Sarari. Sarari who also likes to Basa to some degree, gamer ass. When it comes to her being a gamer, when it comes to her having to have a study session, when it comes to really just simply hanging out. But Yuki never really tries to get to hang out with Tabasa by herself when Sarari got into the picture. Which episode one kind of enforced the OTP so strong because it was just them. But Fuyuki's normally the type of person who brings in as much people as she can just to make it more fun. Which inherently isn't a bad thing if we stay in the friend zone. Because once you have to add more, more people into it, into, into it like that, you kind of suck in the romance out of it. And on the other hand, here's Reyna just meeting Sabasa recently, obviously knowing that he likes her because Sabasa wears it on his face. And she knows that she likes him and they're interested already and have like goals and like ambitions. She just straight up go for it anyways. Not wasting no, that much time to get friend zone and straight up pretty much axes him out. And at this point, I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to diss, diss younger people. You're trying to make say younger people make more mistakes than the older folks because especially this is only one year difference. However, that one year difference has just been shining and been made clear between Fuyuki and Reina. And again, emphasized by them pulling the senpai card as hardly as they are right now. The six episodes where it took Fuyuki to actually realize she likes the bossa, it took Reina an episode and a half to realize that and ask him out. And of course, the time came at the end of the test and we come to find everybody results. Reina is number one, shock, or uh, just hopefully above average. <laughs> Sarari is apparently like 74 out of 176, so she's not in the bottom 100, so I guess she met her girl. Fuyuki scored like 148, which is the bottom 20. Damn. Did you pass at all? This is the final. Are you passing the grade? You got more problems than that bitch trying to take your nigga. I'm telling you that right now. But the big result was a then Shiki Tabasa, who ended up as number three. Fuyuki Samba on anybody. He passed, solved the plot, does not have to go back, he can stay in Hokkaido and be with all the gals. As well as take Ben and Senpai out on a date. His grandma does her normal mistake, where you're like, where'd you go? And he's just like, I'm you know, just going to be a friend of mine. You know. She's just like, mm -hmm, I guess you could do that since you did the top 10. Come back out the curve and push you to a table. And he's also wearing some very much Japanese style clothing, and I ain't gonna lie, I want that hat. 
And when he meets up with Marina, who's damn near in a Yukata, trying to be a Japanese and she can, stereotypes was kind of running through this show all day. I'm just being real. <laughs> looking as stiffy as he can, Marina looking as lovely as she can. He promises not to press up against him right now. Bad time to make that promise. The invitation was on the table, wasn't it? <laughs> While not hand in hand, they're walking very closely enough to each other and they're going on this date. And despite not having a definition, that, whoa. Did you hear that fart? Damn. That might have been the first time I've done that on camera, YouTube history. But despite not having anywhere to actually go, their apparent destination at this time is apparently the side of <laughs> Baruki's mother's car. Baruki's mom going wherever, I think to the store. Sees Stabasa walking with Reyna. And to be fair, she's not wrong. She assumes they're on a date. And she texts for Yuki about it? Huh? Not that Tabasa and Hayden and Hay is doing anything wrong right here, but the story tells it that he got snitched on by Fuyuki's mom. Now we had anime mothers in the past where it's like she wants this main character to hook up with her daughter for whatever reasons. But that don't, that, 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 that don't sit right with me, y'all. Her mom told on him. What? <laughs> they're not even officially together yet. I mean, if you think they should be together, okay. If the show, people watching the show think they're going to be together, okay. All the fingers are live with the mother in the show. Sure. But know your role and mind your business. If your daughter ain't dating him, then whatever. Let me get out of here, y'all. Yeah, man, this story kind of heated up, didn't it? For Yuki pretty much realizing her feelings, gotta make a move now. Rain is already on the rise. Sayuri is in the bed. I don't know what she's doing. She's trying to sleep or did she wake up by the phone? Like, did Fuyuki text her too? What's going on out here? <laughs> about to go on a date. Y'all out here running plays. Let me get out of here. Let's resolve this conflict. I might review next week. I don't know. You watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me. And I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the Spin Move. Uh-huh.